hard as I was right at the beginning for hardly any change in the volume. pressure and positive pressure ventilation, briefly what they mean. The second thing is oxygenation, the third thing is ventilation, and the fourth thing is what is a lung's compliance. So if you understand all of those things, then understanding ventilators is going to be pretty easy. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is how we breathe. So what is breathing? It's your muscles in your chest moving in and out so that you get gas exchange at the level of the alveoli. Gas exchange means that you get oxygen in to your blood, which is called oxygenation, and it also means getting carbon dioxide out of the blood into the air around you, which is considered ventilation. The way that we normally breathe as we're walking around the world is by negative pressure ventilation, which means that we suck air in during inspiration, so for the oxygen to go into the blood, and then we breathe air out, normally passively, we breathe air out by allowing the negative pressure to be released so that the carbon dioxide can leave the body. So that is considered negative pressure ventilation. When we're taking the big breath in, then that is the maximum amount of pressure that you've built up in your lungs. So that can also be considered the peak inspiratory pressure. Like I said, when we're normally breathing, that's a negative pressure. When you let the air out, then normally there's still a little bit of air filling the remaining alveoli in the lungs just to make sure that they don't all collapse. That pressure after you've done a normal exhale is called the peak end expiratory pressure or also called the functional residual capacity. Those both refer to that amount of air remaining in the lungs after a breath to make sure that the alveoli stay open. So like I said, when we're breathing normally, it's considered negative pressure ventilation. When a baby is put onto a breathing machine, it now becomes positive pressure ventilation. So instead of the air being sucked into the lungs, what the machine is doing is actively pushing air into the lungs to expand the lungs. So that peak inspiratory pressure is now a positive pressure. So during the positive pressure, the lungs are completely expanded, and that is the peak inspiratory pressure. And then the machine lets go and leaves a residual pressure going all the time to take the place of the functional residual capacity to make sure that the alveoli don't completely collapse. So that residual pressure, like I said, is called the PEEP, the peak end expiratory pressure. So again, we breathe negative pressure ventilation, the machines that we use breathe positive pressure ventilation. So let's talk about the first aspect of breathing, and that is oxygenation. So oxygenation is getting oxygen in from the room air, which by the way, the percentage of oxygen in room air is 21%. Everybody should know that number. Know that number, learn it forever. Justin's nodding. So oxygenation is getting the oxygen from your surroundings into the bloodstream through the alveoli and into the bloodstream. What's interesting about the oxygenation is that oxygen is very, very bad at being soluble in blood. So that's why it's so important to have hemoglobin. If we didn't have any hemoglobin, even if you were put in 100% oxygen, you would die because the blood is very, very bad at transporting that oxygen around the body. And if you think about it, that oxygen is the PaO2, the oxygen dissolved into the blood. You could have a PaO2 of 600, and if you have like a carbon monoxide poisoning or you don't have any hemoglobin, then you still aren't gonna get enough oxygen going to your cells. So oxygenation is very much dependent on having the hemoglobin really as close as possible to the air sacs where the gas exchange is taking place. So the alveoli and the capillaries of the alveoli need to be very well approximated to make sure that that oxygen can arrive into the hemoglobin and can then be transported around the blood. So 
To have very good oxygenation, you need good VQ matching. So V is the ventilation aspect, so keeping the lungs open and closed, and Q is the perfusion, where the blood is. So what VQ matching means is that for every alveoli, you have a good blood supply going to it. That is when you have perfect VQ matching. You can imagine that if all the alveoli are completely collapsed and all the blood vessels are like a long way away from the alveoli, then you're not going to have VQ matching. And even if you have a lot of oxygen in the alveoli, it's not going to get into the blood. So what's important for oxygenation is the mean airway pressure, which is the average amount of pressure that the lungs seize. So with an increased mean airway pressure, those alveoli are going to be pushed down so that they're well approximated with the blood vessels and therefore improve the level of oxygenation. So just remember that oxygenation is dependent on the mean airway pressure. The higher the mean, the closer the approximation and therefore the better the oxygenation. Okay, so now let's talk about ventilation. The third core basic aspect that you have to know. So ventilation, like we said, is getting carbon dioxide out of the body. Carbon dioxide is very different from oxygen. It is very soluble in blood. In fact, blood carries it around very, very freely. So the problem is not having the blood vessels and the alveoli well approximated to get rid of the CO2. The problem with the carbon dioxide is getting the carbon dioxide from the alveoli out of the body. So what that is dependent on is the size of the breath with each breath that you take. Because the bigger the breath that you take, or another word for that, is the bigger the tidal volume, then the higher amount of CO2 you can get from the alveolar sac outside of the body. So the tidal volume will predict how much CO2 you're able to get rid of. If you also think about it, the rate that you're breathing will also help you get rid of more CO2. So if your tidal volume stays the same, so with each breath you're getting rid of a certain amount of carbon dioxide, if you breathe much faster at the same volume, then you're going to get rid of a lot more carbon dioxide, which is, if you think about it, why you go running. As you go running, you're needing more oxygen and you produce more carbon dioxide. So you breathe in deeper. Breathing in deeper is going to do two things. It's going to increase your mean airway pressure, so increase the pressure that the lungs are exposed to, therefore improve your VQ matching, therefore improve your oxygenation. And if you're breathing deeper, then with each breath that you take, there's going to be a larger tidal volume. So that's going to increase getting rid of your CO2, so improve your ventilation. You also breathe a lot faster, which is also going to affect your ventilation. So just remember this, the oxygenation is dependent on the mean airway pressure, the ventilation or getting rid of CO2 is dependent on your tidal volume and your rate. The fourth concept that you have to understand to really get ventilators is the concept of compliance. What compliance basically means is how much pressure is needed to deliver a certain volume. The higher the compliance, the lower the pressure is needed to deliver the volume. So, I have a prop for this. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you very, very clearly what compliance is like in a lung. So you can see when I first start blowing the balloon, I have to put so much pressure in right at the beginning to open up the balloon, right? So that means that the compliance is not good. It needs a lot of pressure to hardly get any volume. Now that it's opened up, the compliance is much, much better. So now watch this. So now the compliance is much, much better. As the balloon gets bigger and it gets really, really full, then the compliance is going to worsen again. So now I need a lot more pressure to make even a little bit of change in the volume, right now. So I'm blowing pretty much just as hard as I was right at the beginning for hardly any change in the volume. <laughs> a much more scientific way of describing that than blowing up a balloon would be to put it all on a graph. So let me show you what a compliance curve looks like, exactly the same as the balloon. So we have the pressure along the x-axis and then the volume along the y-axis. 
So a compliance curve is going to look something like this. So let me explain this graph to you. So you see that right at the beginning, I had to give this much pressure and the balloon only got that much bigger. There was only that much increase in the size of the balloon. But then the next stage of blowing up the balloon, if I gave that much pressure, then the volume got much, much larger. So you can see that in this stage of the balloon, where it was at its most compliant, a much smaller amount of pressure resulted in a much larger volume. And then right at the end, when the balloon was really hyperinflated, all the extra pressure that I was giving barely made the volume any bigger. So this is a very typical compliance curve for the lungs. So two things that I want you to understand from this. The first thing is, is that obviously each baby is going to have different lung compliance, depending on the age of the baby, depending on a bunch of other genetic intrinsic factors. The other important thing for you to understand is that even during the day, a baby's compliance curve could change a lot. So for example, if the lungs become a lot wetter, then that curve is going to go more like this because again, it's still going to need a lot more pressure to open up the lungs. The lungs are like a sponge. The wetter they are, then the more pressure they need to open them. If you suddenly give surfactant to a baby, then that's going to completely open up the lungs. So that compliance curve really improves and it's going to be something like that. So that's the first concept that I want you to understand, that the compliance curve can change. The second thing that I want you to understand is what a normal breath is like when we're doing negative pressure ventilation or a baby's doing positive pressure ventilation on the breathing machine. So the pressure difference that you're giving between the PIP, so that's the maximum pressure that the baby is being given or that the baby is being given during inspiration, and the difference between the PEEP, so that is the lowest pressure that's being given, the peak end expiratory pressure that's just keeping the alveoli open. The difference in pressure is going to determine the tidal volume with each breath. So for example, if your PIP is 20 and arbitrary units here, and your PEEP is 5, then your delta P is 15, then when your PIP is at 20, then that is how open your lungs are going to be. When your PEEP is at 5, then that is how open the lungs are going to be. So your tidal volume is going to be that. That is going to be the amount of air that's breathed in and out with each breath. So you can look at this graph and say, okay, we could increase the tidal volume by going up on the PEEP. And in this way, you could also increase the tidal volume by, if anything, going down on the PEEP. I'm not going to discuss that now. I want to go through more details with a ventilator talk. But for now, it's very important that you understand that the tidal volume is dependent not only on the delta P, so the difference in the PIP and the PEEP, but also on the compliance of the lungs and where you are on the compliance curve. So for example, if you had a delta P of 15, but instead of it being 20 and 5, it was 15 and 0, the, the delta P, then your tidal volume would be from there to there. Your tidal volume would be much, much lower than the tidal volume with a PEEP of 20, even though the difference in pressure is the same. And the reason for that is because you are in a much stiffer area or less compliant area of the lungs. I hope you learned something. I really cannot emphasize enough that those really are the core facts that you need to understand to understand ventilation. So if you, if you don't quite get it, go back and watch the